What's going on guys, Nate Dog here. Today I'm bringing you my mod list on the Xbox One for episode zero of my new brand new series I will be coming out with for Let's Role Play Skyrim. But before we get into my mod list, if you guys would please help support my channel by hitting that subscribe button on YouTube. And then if you guys could also follow me on Mixer, that'd be a great help. A further greater help would be if you guys would donate to my channel. I have a link listed under my mixer and I will leave it in the description on YouTube. But without further ado, let's dive into these mods. So, in my mod list, what I was looking for for this Let's Roleplay Skyrim series was immersion, making the game realistic, and of course, the roleplaying style. For you, those that don't know it, immersion is when the NPCs interact with objects or when you inter interact with objects in the game. So like you searching through sacks, sacks will end up moving. NPCs interact with the world so they ain't standing in the same spot and things like that. For the realistic thing, I went this route because most of Skyrim, when you play the game in the vanilla, people say that Oh, Skyrim is hard, it's cold weather, but most of the time you find like your typical Minnesotans that have t-shirts wearing nothing but that, not affected by the cold when it's probably negative 40 some odd degrees out there. So I decided to put some realistic stuff into it like the weather affects you, you need to eat, sleep, and whatever because I felt that was going to be good for this role playing aspect. And for the role playing, I added things like perks, give more give more perks so that way you can actually narrow your character down a single path because in the vanilla game you kind of had a general genre thing of oh if you're an archer it's archery. Well in this game when we're going down let's say archery there's a couple different branches of archery to help more define your character and I also put things in the game that actually make enemies that you face in the game not all the same meaning that bandits will have certain stats like they'll be maybe good against poison weak against sharp objects and good against you know heavy armor bandits will probably be good against blunt objects like a mace and then a different creature let's say a troll would be bad against the mace bad against the fire but good against other things that the band wasn't. Things like that add more flavor to the game so you're not fighting the same enemies the same way all the time so gameplay changes. But so let's begin with the first patch I have is the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition. I'm only going to give brief descriptions of each of these because I got quite a bit of them and it would take a long time to go through them and I don't want to waste everybody's time talking about all these ones that I did but so I'm just going to do a brief description on each of them. So, this patch here basically fixes bugs in the game that was in the vanilla game and adds them up. Campfire, basically what it says is it gives you campfire utensils so you can build. You can have tents, you can get a bigger tent for you and your companions. Campfire, you don't have to stay at inns all the time and that way when with another one of my mods it's easier to survive in Skyrim. Uh, 60 FPS menu, this is just to make things load a little bit quicker so that way when you hit the menu it's not taking a while and then hit into it. Font replacer, I just changed the font per replacer to look more like this. As you read my screen you can kind of tell it's maybe a little hard to read it but I figured that gives it the more medieval type of texture to it. Dragon Whisper menu replacer, this is a phenomenal menu replacer when you jump into the game it totally changed this whole aspect it's not Skyrim anymore it's more so you know it just changes the atmosphere so it makes me want to play so I change this you guys can put whatever you want here but this is what I picked load screen replacer this it has beautiful load screen replacers let me tell you they are a ton of them 
but really, I can't really tell you all of them because I haven't even gone through all of them yet, but they are realistic, kind of almost like somebody hand-painted them. A ton of them must have, I say, to add characteristics to your load screen. We have Elder Scrolls music combined, so we're combining the music from Morrowind and Oblivion and Skyrim. That way you kind of, for me it was to kind of spice things up so it's not the same Skyrim music playing over and over and over. I just wanted to spice it up. I like the music from Morrowind. I also like the music from Oblivion, so why not add them to the game? I have Cheat Room. This is not so I can actually cheat in the game. This is if I get stuck someplace and I can't get out, or if I'm stuck in an animation that I can't get out that way. I can teleport to Cheat Room, teleport back, hopefully get out of the animation when I do that. Color patches remove. Picture there, orange blocks. That's not the only orange block, but there's a couple orange blocks in the game. Completely gets rid of them. Quality world map. This makes it so it's not so damp, dark, and cloudy type of map when you do the vanilla game this way. It's a lot of the clouds have been removed, giving it more of a crisp look. Pastel marker map markers. This just changes your map markers. It gives it some colors to it, so it's not the same. Just plain black and white colors it adds characteristics to it update mine markers this means when you hit a mine it tells you exactly what kind of ore you find in that mine so that way it for me it was like if you're gonna be role playing you should kind of when you went there you should kind of know what kind of ore was in there and make a note on your map so that's why i added that sky hud this makes it so a lot of things when we're playing the game is actually out of our view I changed the actual little HUD marker in the center to be a single dot like Oblivion was and then I changed where my health magicka and stanima attributes sit and things like that point the way this just makes the way the point uh, the post signs thank you post signs point the way on where they're actually supposed to go instead of them looking not so well in the vanilla game and we did lamp posts of Skyrim, that means just getting lights on the main road so that way you guys know I'm on the main road, that way I know I'm on the main road. Figured each of the Yarls want their guys to know and which way to patrol type thing and gives it a little bit more light when traveling at nighttime. Beautiful honey signs, you can see in this picture from the left to the right, the right is a vanilla game, the left is actually what the update is so it just makes it more crisp of a sign. Character creation overhaul, this dramatically changes the game. This is where our roleplay comes in. You actually, when creating character, all your stats actually start at 5. And based on what type of combat class you, what type of class you are, and what kind of specialist you are, depend, gives you what attributes are actually higher than the other. But everything else, if you don't have it known, it's at 5. And everything's a lot harder to level up if it's 5. This is a dyna dynamic skill progress, this is just what it says, it just makes it a little harder in the skill progress for those that are at 5. Diverse race and genders, this makes it so when you're playing the game that if I'm an orc, the carry weight I can hold could probably be like 375 pounds versus a female, let's say, wood elf might be only 150 or something like that. We got Mystic. Magic overhaul, this adds a lot of magic in the game. 200 new spells out of the world. Ordinance, this is a redone on the perks of Skyrim. Changes a ton of them. Great thing to have if you want to do any role-playing style. Then we got, we got Majestics again, but with the Ordinance paths. That way these two kind of coincide. That way the spells that you add go into the right trees. Then we got Apophilix. Eh, sorry, I can't really pronounce that word, but it's the magic of Skyrim. Adds more magic to the game. We had to get also the ordinance compatibility with it too. We did Wildcat. This changes the combat system, so it, it's a really where you can actually get hurt. Wildcat is where if you get hurt under like a certain thres threshold, threshold. Sorry, a threshold. 
That way, when you get hit at that point, let's say 30% or lower, you can edit in the game, but 30% or lower, you could actually have a chance of actually getting, like, getting an arrow in the leg actually now makes you stumble for the next minute or so. Aurora, these changes of standing stone, so it's not your typical standing stone. Some are listed right there in the screen, as you can see, but it just changed the standing stones a little bit. Winter Sun, this adds faith to Skyrim. A lot of all the nine faiths you have, you can go into it, and then even some races have special ones, and there's even some out of the world that you can actually pick up if you choose to do something else for a religion. This, I figured if I was going to do a priest rule style, this would help with it. Summer Mist Enchantment, so this adds a lot more enchantments to the game. We have 20% more perk bonuses, so every five levels we'll, we'll receive an additional perks. You kind of have to get have this in order to get enough perks for your ordinance, because like I said, there's a lot of perks in ordinance, and you'd have to level up a skill several times to even get decently deep into the game with perks. Then we got perk point at skill level, so this gives you an extra perk point also at 50, 75, and 100 of that level and what I mean by level I mean by the level in the skill so your skill has to get to level 50 then 75 and then 100 and you get a perk point for each of those realistic impact so this is when dragons are hitting the ground that way your screen actually shakes a lot better ragdoll on the force so through so da on someone they kind of fly a little bit better than that realistic death physics this just makes it so kill effects are a little bit more realistic it does also warn you do not install this mod and have it active if you go through the very first scene because then you will actually pretty much be laying on the ground for all eternity then we did archer tweak plus this makes archery a little bit harder and it also makes the arrows kind of fly more realistic and also NPCs can't dodge especially when they're not looking at you and you shoot an arrow and they dodge it perfectly so annoying so this helps we have improved close face helmets so that means basically in close face helmets are black this makes it so you can actually see their eyes cloaks and capes like it says just adds Looks and capes to the game for each faction, holds, and things like that. Practical armor, this makes it so that way. Like I said, Skyrim's hardy. You see people wearing short sleeves. Makes it so people ain't wearing short sleeves on their armor. And like even fur armor where their chest is bare up even in the coldest regions, they're actually wearing something. Visible favorite gear, this is a just a little f flavor I like with that I can see all the favorite weapon I have because I don't like it how it was just one weapon in the vanilla so this just gives you a ton more wearable lanterns this is to add a more light source because I do have some mods where it gets dark so it's nice to have a lantern that you can actually wear and use belt fats and quivers again with a lot of visible favorite gear there's a lot of things going on around your back especially if you're wearing a bow and then a two-handed sword or whatever two-handed weapon this way the belt kind of moves a little bit lower down did multiple rings because i know like in the lord of the rings aragorn is wearing actually a couple of rings so i figured why not why can't everybody else so added that become a bard like i said more of a role-playing style you can play music and things like that smithing enhance this makes it the smithing in the game more realistic you actually have to smith a blade then you got to smith a hilt and then you got to probably smith something else and then you got to actually smith it all together in order to get your weapon so for me this is more trying to make the game also realistic at the same time mystic conduction so this actually makes it so all your small potions you can actually mix together to actually make a larger potion especially in later games you usually have a lot of the smaller potions when you're running around so this makes it so you can combine them all Enhanced blood texture, 
pretty much what it says, just makes it so when you're hitting things, there is a lot more blood spattering in the game. Uh, we did Mystical Dragons, this just changes the colors of the dragons, so that way there's a little bit of variance in dragons, not that they're kind of all the same color, make a lot more vibrant colors. I crime realistic pretty much it means if you kill somebody you pretty much get a thousand bounty or it actually makes your bounties a lot higher and in order to pay them off it's a lot higher because back in those times it was it should be a little bit more punishing for that because right here it says pickpocketing is 150 gold for a fine. Breaking and entering is 500 gold for doing that. Simple assault, pretty much attacking someone is 750 gold, so on and so forth. Better, better spell learning, this is where you actually got it. In order to learn the spell, instead of flipping the book and you read it, you actually got to flip it open a couple times and actually slowly learn it to actually know the be spell. This is for a patch of the... The pop, Apocalypse Magic of Skyrim. This is when we added more spells to it. That way, those that were added to the spell books, you also have them and you gotta learn them better. Hunterborn. Make realistic skinning and hunting on animals. So you actually gotta sit there and actually harvest the animals and things like that. And it takes, usually when you do it, it takes an hour in your game. An hour in your game goes by when you do it. Real life, this adds more animals to the game instead of your just typical elk, 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 and things like that, you know, where you just have an elk that looks like a caribou, but it's not a caribou. It's called an elk, yeah, things like that. Skyrim fishing, that way you can actually fish instead of swimming underwater and go fishing. This is also to help out with one of my other mods, so that way you're not, it could potentially risk being frozen to death by going in cold water. Lupinish is a mod that adds werewolves to the game that are actually naturally occurring werewolves. So that way you can actually become a werewolf without joining the companions. Convenient horses, great mod. Adds horses to the game. Increases like, you know, mount harvesting of ingredients, things like that. You can name them, quick swapping, things like that. Beauty of Skyrim, this is to make NPCs actually look better in a lot of ways. Same with Divine Skins and Bodies makes men more muscular, women more fatigue. Beards gives better graphics to the beards in the game, and also there's several more different beards to the game that are added. Missive is pretty much a billboard that you can find to do there are like four different type of ones for each hold where you basically either become a carrier find an object for somebody or deliver weapons and things like that or take out bandits realistic fire that way if you jump in a fire pit you actually burn instead of in the vanilla you don't realistic in and carriers this makes the game more expensive when you actually want to rent a room for the inn or take a carriage Regular holds are 250 gold, and then non-holds are like 300 some odd gold. Cooking in inns and taverns, this will help with a mod that I have I need, so that way it's a lot easier to actually cook things when, because you run into inns and taverns a lot more, and that way if you're not traveling around, you can actually cook at the inns and taverns. Gold coins have weight, so yes, you cannot infinitely carry a ton of gold. You actually have to watch out how much you can actually carry with gold. No easy symptom. This makes it more realistic that since Skyrim was in a civil war, that a lot of people actually don't have gold coins on hand. Like some quests you do, there's 250 gold. No, you're probably only getting now 25 gold pieces instead. Frostfall, this is one I'm talking about. You will need campfire for this one. Frostfall adds the cold to the game, so weather actually does matter. So if you're outside and it's the wind's blowing and it's freezing, you could potentially freeze to death. Or if you go swimming in cold water, you could die from hypothermia. Wet and cold, this just makes it more realistic that 
weather actually is on NPCs, like when it's raining, that water actually drips off your character. Your character has frost on them when it's cold out and things like that. I need food, water, and sleep. This adds it that you actually need food, water, and sleep. If you don't in two days of food or water, you can die. Or if you don't sleep in three days, you will also die too. I need extended. This just makes it for a water mod that when you go up to water, you can actually automatically refill your water skin. Animated cluster. This pretty much adds it when you open up sacks and things like that and barrels that there's actually a movement on your screen of the barrel actually opening up or the sack looks like it's actually opening up. Open Civil War, this makes it so like Whiterun and Windhelm or Solitude when you actually fight in those capitals, you actually got to take it over. Well, this is basically the same thing. In order to conquer an area, let's say Riften, you actually have to take Riften out so that way the Stormcloaks don't have Riften under their banners. So you have to take each hold. And most of the patrols that way just adds more people actually traveling around and they actually react to you. So if you are a Stormcloak and the Imperials see you, the Imperials will attack you because you are a Stormcloak soldier. Populate the forts. I, for, I thought that the forts in the game were a little bit too low. That only four or five bandits guard the whole tower or the outside perimeter at all times. So this adds a lot more and a lot more on the inside. Immersive movements, this makes the movements in the game feel a little bit more realistic. Especially in and out of combat. I have mortal enemies, this makes your enemies a lot harder. And makes their attacking cones a little bit more realistic. So instead of a sword being, you know, a great sword having a huge, or I should say, a sword actually had... Practically, in the vanilla game, had the exact same reach as a great sword. This time, it actually cones it down a little bit more and makes it actually shorter and things like that. This adds just a little bit more realistic to your combat. Know your enemy. This is the one where I was talking about is you actually have to know what your enemy is. Physically, good strengths and weaknesses. Not all enemies are the same. You can't use fire on every single enemy. Some will be resistance to the flame. Some will actually not take effect from the flame at all and things like that which i know is resistance but still like i said you gotta plan your battles before you get to them magical college of winterhold this actually is a thing to make it more vibrant and change it up a little bit magical stab stabs and or staves and staffs this adds like it says just add staves and staffs to the magical to the college Immersive Winterhold, this adds more NPCs in the college, that way it's not just a handful of you guys, that way it's more vibrant. Luminous Atronauts, that way these guys are glowing, because I figured they're kind of magical, so why ain't they glowing in the game? So this just makes them illuminate a lot more. Opulent Thieves Guild, this is when doing the Thieves Guild, things matter, so you're, even the littlest progress the Thieves Guild actually gets updated a little bit and you can see it and that's what the whole point of this is to make it so you can actually see it get more. Immersive hold borders. I fear there's a civil war going on so we need more border or more guards at the borders to make sure th crime ain't going on outside their borders that way they're more guarded because with immersive patrols also bandits patrol the area too so that way you actually have a little bit of help too on your trips. This is a patch. This is for, you'll need this in, if you're doing alternate start, which I am, so you're gonna need this patch for it. Then you got Imperius, Race of Skyrim. This just changes the how the overall races are, that they're not the same thing over and over, that they're kind of more of, they get like, three abilities and then one of them they actually gotta go find out themselves through exploring or things like that that they actually gotta find which is a power effect reputation so in this this is pretty much whatever you do actually matters so if you become a werewolf or vampire per se 
citizens might no longer want to actually talk to you because they know you are a vampire or werewolf. Especially if you're a level 4 vampire, they can really tell and then they don't really want to talk to you at all. Realistic conversations, just making things, instead of them kind of repeat the same thing over and over that way, they're kind of talking to each other with different other things. And then relationship dialogue overhaul, this makes it so people actually treat you kind of how they should type thing. And this is the patch that you'll need because you have the unofficial Skyrim patch very at the top, so you're going to need this patch for that. Overwhelming multiple flowers, this followers. This adds three followers instead of just a generic one, so you can have one, you know, three regular ones and then like three dogs on top of that too, so you can have like a total of like six people following you that way. I figured if, because I'm going to be playing this on legendary difficulty, so, and Oh, and towers and all that, and forts have more people, so figured I need a couple more followers. That way it makes it a little bit more fun that I got comrades. You'll need this. This is the patch for the what I just said RDO had, which is re relationship dialogue overall, because this is for the unofficial Skyrim patch. And then you will also need the relationship dialogue overall patch for this too. And by the way, on this overwhelming multiple follower thing, there are three different types of mods. I end up going with the actual default one. There's other two, which actually makes your followers mortal, where they can actually die when they actually reach zero health, which makes the game a lot harder. Yes, I know that's probably the more realistic out of this one, but I would decide to just keep that kind of just standard a little bit. Run for your lives. This makes it so... NPC so you don't have a granny running out in the middle of a dragon fight with a dagger Going out there and just dying because she fought the dragon with the dagger I don't know why she would do that, but she did so this makes it so that she goes inside and keeps knitting on her stuff Divines This is actually makes pops out effects a little bit more just even like looking at like rocks or lumber and all that pretty much the graphics kind of pop out of this this is what this mod is enhanced lighting effects this makes certain lightings in inns and dungeons kind of changing the light effect in it then we have immersive citizens this is so that way they're interacting with each other interacting with the world around them ai overhaul by the way then we have you E L F X hardcore so that way dungeons are dark. We want to make them pretty much dark that they were inhabitable. The ones that are, you know, that have droggers in them, that somebody has probably not been walking in that one for a long time, makes it practically dark. The ones that do have people in it, those ones actually are a little bit brighter. Then we have immersive citizen with. The, the mod above it, Hardcore Patch. Because you want them to also interact with the Hardcore, so that way they actually grab torches and stuff too. That the citizens have torches because they can't see either. We have the e ELFX, no fake lights under the doors. This, one, this mod here kind of cuts in, cuts out sometimes, and sometimes... You you don't have lights underneath your doors, but sometimes, most of the time, I found you actually do. And this is the patch for the divine that we had way up at the top right here. This is just a patch to make them all work together. Then we have alternate start, live another life. I figured instead of playing the vanilla game over and over and over again, for the role playing aspect, that way we can kind of pick where we start out, so that way it kind of fits our role playing a little bit better. That, oh, if we were. If we were a thief, that we could be part of the Thieves Guild right away, or an assassin, we could be part of the Dark Brotherhood, things like that. This is Immersive Holds Borders for the alter Live an Another Life patch. So that way you don't land on top of that one of those holes. Hold Borders, I should say. This is the Light patch for the College of Winterhold, that way it goes along with the lighting that we just did. Now we'll go 
goes along with this. Then we have the Thieves Guild again. This is also now fixed with that lighting patch. So that way it also can work with along with that light. Then we have Real Realistic Waters 2. Gives more water effect. And then we have Realistic Waters 2. I Needs patch. So this kind of goes with the I Needs Extended. Which I Needs Extended also has. Where you can collect snow to actually make water. But this also goes with I need So that way you can actually walk into the water. And actually use your water skin on the water. And it works. And that is it. Out of all of our mods. We are done. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode of Let's Roleplay Skyrim. Mm -hmm.